to uh, streamline this. This is this is abstract art, abstract portraiture. This is not. Everybody has that. I can hear the laughs. <laughs> no, um, actually, in all seriousness, uh, art, abstract art is a lot more expansive than that. Um, it could be anywhere from cave art and just the simplistic forms of a bison on a cave wall to unrecognizable, unrepresentational um, art uh, like Jackson Pollock. So let me get you an abstract expressionist piece so you can kind of see. So this would be abstract expressionist art. It's abstract, but it's not representational. Uh, even though, you know, you can see a couple of guys in New York gallery going, I think what the artist was trying to say here was that the <laughs> industrial revolution impact on the free market economy and the other guys just going, I don't know, it's pretty colorful, but this one is pretty good. <laughs> not representational, not abstract portraiture, okay? With the advent of the uh, camera in 1839, people were inspired to create art in other ways. Art portraiture is taken care of with photography, but um, we can start doing some other things. But actually, abstract portraiture was going on way before um, the Impressionist area, where things started getting a little more fuzzy and uh, abstracted. So I'm just going to show you a couple examples of earlier abstract portraiture. All right, so we talked a little bit about Picasso. Picasso, and we'll get into that in a second, um, tried to show multiple points of view at, at one time through two-dimensional art. But the ancient Egyptians kind of were doing a little bit first. So the head has a frontal eye, even though the head is in profile. The body is more frontal. And then the, uh, the legs and the hips are kind of a profile. And so this is called twisted perspective. So you have a frontal eye and a frontal chest area, but the, the actual head and the hips and the legs are to the side. So that was like one of the first um, slightly abstracted. I wouldn't quite say this is what we're looking for, but it's slightly abstracted. Um, it kind of moved on into Byzantine art where they're doing really flat stuff. And then after the Renaissance, there was mannerism. So let me give you a so when Michelangelo was painting the Sistine Chapel, he started doing some elongation and some twisting, and artists started to do um, some really just long, elongated, a little bit distorted, very simplified. And so mannerism was kind of doing that a little bit too. So fast forward, and then Picasso came in. Uh, he and George Barak were looking at breaking things apart, looking at 360 degrees on a flat two-dimensional surface. And he started um, showing frontal and portrait or uh, profile all at once. So we're gonna take a look at some activities that uh, you might be able to do um, in a little while. So right now we have a, uh, a quick video on Picasso, which will give you some more insight about um, some things I want you to think about. To kind of narrow it down, abstract portraiture, you can kind of think of simplified, uh, stylized, and arbitrary coloration or local coloration. And so Marcia has a video that kind of gets into some of those things for the delay. So I just wanted to preface this by saying um, this, this video is very kid friendly. It's not meant to talk down to you. Not everybody does abstract art or abstract portraiture. So this just tries to make it comfortable, very easy, um, really, really fun and simple to, to talk about. Okay. So a little thing about Picasso, he, he may not have been necessarily the greatest artist of all time, but he was far, probably the most all-inclusive. He tried so many things. Um, from representational art to abstract portraiture to collage to um, really simplified shapes. Um, if we were to do a live workshop, we would have had you do a quick five minute sketch right now of a realistic piece. And Marsha did one of Cheryl, and we'll have that photo available if you think you want to use Cheryl as your image. And that's just the kind of 
breaking it down from more realistic and we're going to start going into the more abstract and again the main words i want you to think about is simplified stylized and arbitrary coloration or local coloration and that just means colors you wouldn't normally see in, in the real world and so this is an image that that marcia did um, just a quick five minute down and dirty sketch where we're just going to do a simple sketch of Cheryl or a person that you want to do and it's just to kind of get your skills ready to, to kind of change it up. So once you understand a realistic piece, it will help you understand how you can start simplifying it and stylizing it. And we have a quick video. Do, do we want to try the video or if yeah. not? Okay. This is a, a, a quick um, video on kind of the history of portraits. Some of them abstract, some of them realistic, and how portraits really got um, started all the way from, you know, kings and queens and rich people all the way to selfies today. So portraitures have been around a long time. Okay, now let me know right away if you can't see this. Yes. Okay, and in a moment in time, how much longer do I have to stay like this for? Not much longer. Okay, maybe a few moments in time. There are whole galleries around the globe and right here in Australia dedicated to portraits. There are portrait competitions like the Archibald Prize and probably the most famous painting in the world is, yep, you guessed it, a portrait. But why are portraits? such a big deal. I think I know someone I can ask. Wait, where are you going? Uh, just stay still. Hi Lisa, nice to meet you. Hello Amelia, welcome to the Art Gallery of South Australia. When did portraiture become a thing? Portraiture became very popular from around the 13th century and interestingly, that's when the word portrait was invented. So it means to show a likeness. Ah, the Middle Ages. Think medieval knights and stuff. After that came the Renaissance, around the 1500s, when artists like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo did their thing. And people started to value art more than ever before. So who were the kind of people who were having their portraits painted? Usually the wealthy and the powerful. Remember that there's no photography to make a permanent image of yourself. So art served as a way of memorialising somebody. People who've been dead for hundreds of years could still be kind of living on the wall, if that makes sense. As centuries went on, artists who weren't getting paid the big bucks would paint loved ones, strangers, or their own faces instead. So portraits were no longer just of the rich and famous. Then photography came along and things changed again. So portrait photography became a booming business. There were photography studios lining all the major capital cities in Australia. Painting had to change. Painting's role was no longer to paint things that looked like life because that's what photography could do, just like that. So, Lisa, I have a serious question for you. What about a selfie? Does that count as a portrait? Oh, good photo. I love that. It's a very good one. You know, selfies are the ultimate portraits, really, the ultimate self-portraits, and they stand in a long line of portraiture. They're not just something from the 21st century. Artists have been making selfies for a long time. It's just more difficult in the old days. So why are portraits still relevant today if we have photography and everything? I think they are ever popular because we are so curious. We are curious about ourselves. We are curious about each other. And we are curious about people who lived a long, long time ago. So when you come into the art gallery, sometimes you can stand in front of a portrait that was made 400 years ago. It's like time travel. Well, in that case, Lisa, I'm going to go finish my portrait, I reckon. Yes, Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> and it's done. 
my masterpiece. I love it. We're going to talk about um, Picasso and how he started breaking things down to show multiple perspectives of a person. And that's where abstract portraiture really took off. So for this show, we want to do things that are somewhat representational, but not realistic, like a, a, a photograph would be. We want to show things in a simplified, stylized, or arbitrary coloration. I know, um, you know, different people have blue or purple hair now, it's became more mainstream, but arbitrary coloration, like you, you normally wouldn't see a person with a green face unless they hate something that didn't agree with them. So for now, I'm going to break it down, uh, a Picasso-inspired piece, and just kind of give you some ideas that uh, may inspire you. Um, before I get going into this, so this is going to be a, a portrait. It could be a single person for our art show. It could be a group portraiture. Think of you know the the, the Dutch um, Baroque and the Golden Age, where you had all the Dutch portraits of multiple people, or you can do animals. So an animal portrait. So you can use uh, these techniques or techniques you decide to do on your own. So in starting this, I'm going to do a profile. Just, just cutting this in half and showing the profile of the nose. And then I'm going to do a profile of lips for my, my abstract Picasso portrait. And the eye, if you remember the Egyptian eye I showed you, it was more frontal. I'm going to do a, a profile eye here. along the way I can start doing some stylization. Picasso and some of the other artists with the, the influx of, of Europeans um, colonizing and empire building in other areas, Africa and Asia started to have their influence. And so um, African masks or um, post-impressionist artists were really inspired by Asia and the flatness and the cropping. And so um, some artists started um, appropriating some African and Asian art into their, their work. So with the, uh, so this would be more of a, a side profile. And then the other side in Picasso uh, style would be more frontal. So I could And then I'm going to do a more frontal mouth. So I'm going to just go straight across and then make, make a frontal view. And then I'm going to finish this up a little bit and then show you some examples of adding arbitrary coloration and, and other techniques. You can have hair different on one side. You can have ears higher and lower. Um, different designs. This is just inspirational. You notice I'm using kind of stylized and also just simple shapes. And so that kind of all goes with, with abstract portraiture. You can alternate with triangles and circles. And so I'm showing two views, the profile and then a frontal view. And then I'll show you some pre-mades. So this is a man I've got 
different hairstyles. I've got the, the profile. His mustache is doing different things. His tie has different perspectives. So just stylization mostly is going on with Picasso. He does have some simplification of form with his geometric shapes. So it's just more. And you can put um, like a potato head, the ears and stuff in different <laughs> locations. There, there really is no um, recipe. The main thing is you want it to be slightly representational, but not totally realistic. That's the key. And again, the main words are simplified, stylized, arbitrary colors. So some ideas for color, uh, what I did on, on this lady in the Picasso style, I used some complementary colors um, like yellow and purples and orange and blues and kind of alternated and um, do some simple shapes, some stylized design. And those are just giving you some ideas of, um, of what you can do with color. And so obviously you're not gonna see a person like this walking down the street if you do. Let me know. I want to see, but um, just just some ideas for some stylization uh, in a Picasso type format. I'm going to show you some simplified forms now. So we're talking about simplified forms. Sometimes simplified or primitive are kind of are derogatory statements that mean less than and. How I mean it here is it's just a simple breakdown of, I take away the eyeball or the nose and the mouth and I just really simplify it. And so I'll show you what I'm doing here. So just basic movements uh, with, with the pen have created just some suggestive representation of what an eye would be when we're moving to a nose, mouth, and chin. So for cheeks, I'm using simplified shapes, kind of a moon, a uh, rounded triangle. And obviously with color, and I've got some examples. Um, this is almost mask-like to me. Just it, it just hints of what those shapes would be, and it's just, this would be more simplified. And you can look at reference photos. I'll show you something that, that I'm doing that I might be making into a painting in a second, but just simplify it. Hence a representation. And this is probably the most close to one of the most abstracted ways you can do portraiture work. You're just doing hints. Um, what we kind of, I think, see, and correct me if I'm wrong, people here, just we want it to be enough where you can go, okay, I get, I can kind of see a person there to somewhere that's more um, like Picasso or Basquiat where, all right, I can definitely tell that that's an abstract portrait. All right, this is my Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> that had to take more than five minutes. <laughs> yes, it took more than five minutes, but very simplified, very mask-like. She decided to get a little more cutesy with her hair that day. <laughs> um, I don't know what she's got going on with all these colors, but. Um, so just interesting, I've kind of got it split down the middle, um, just some designs. So this is, I would say, you've got your arbitrary coloration, um, you've got simple shapes and a little bit of stylization going on. So we're gonna play a game here in a second um, after I show you a couple more things. It's called, is it simplified, stylized, or arbitrary coloration, or it can be all together. And I will show you animals, a single portrait, and um, a group portrait. So, so I am working on this on a, a small canvas. 
And so this is obviously an, an Asian woman in traditional dress. And I'll show you what I did. I did a, a quick sketch today of simplified, kind of using the techniques I just showed you. So this is bigger. I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can. You see okay? Um, so I just did the outline of her hair, obviously her eyes and her eyebrows are just very simplified, her mouth. The fan, I kind of um, got a little more stylized. Um, I'll probably do some oranges and yellows and some pinks and purples here. And so they're kind of representational to what she looks like, but um, her hand, you can see, is very simplified. And I'm not sure what I would go on and do, but it just kind of shows you how you can break things down. And um, I'll show you some pieces that I've done, and we'll play simplified, stylized, or arbitrary colors. What do you think, Kenny? I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anybody? <laughs> so um, this is an Asian woman drinking tea. Obviously, it's got arbitrary coloration, but um, very simplified. Just the hint of the nose and the mouth. Her arm is there, and then the teacup is kind of uh, just a hint of it. So you can tell it's a person. It's kind of contemplative, and um, maybe a little bit of stylization, but I'm saying more simplified and abstract colors. The color really adds to the emotion of that piece. So this is animals and group animals. And with this, what do you think? Color, color. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely arbitrary coloration. I've never seen a blue giraffe. Um, <laughs> it's simplified, but also on the border of stylization. Um, some of the, this was probably one of the first pieces I did where I started incorporating background into and just giving a suggestion of the of the giraffe's face um, with the eye there you kind of have to use your imagination where you see it coming in the sky is getting into the face and so i'm kind of morphing in if you will um, the the quality of the giraffe's face and the background and that's another abstracted technique that you could do so, lost edges yes <laughs> So this would be a group portraiture of an animal. What do you think about this one? So definitely arbitrary coloration. I would say this one leans more to stylization. So it is implied of things going on with her face. Um, almost Picasso-like, but with just kind of the, with the framing of her face. Um, again, our hair is kind of morphing in, the face is morphing into the background. So you can still tell it's a woman, but pretty abstract. Uh, these are two musicians. Um, if you didn't know, this is Miles Davis and Ron Carter. The instruments are, some, some parts of it are implied, um his his body is morphing into the back this is obviously arbitrary coloration with uh stylization and there is some simplification of just a hint of eye and nose and things like that all right and one final piece this is um ballet dancers and uh with this we've got some Heavy stylization with the back windows. Um, the body is morphing into the background, arbitrary coloration. And so, like I showed you, I'll, I'll show you that piece again. You can do arbitrary, or uh, I'm sorry, simplified or stylized forms. You don't necessarily have to have a face. They're almost like silhouettes, and you can do different things with. Um, whole bodies or, or groups where um, we just give a hint of a representation of quality to it, if that makes sense. 
And we talked a lot about stylization, simplification. We're going to talk about color and how the phobist really brought in color with emotion into uh, kind of a foundation for abstract art. While she's setting this up, um, you could do some, some ideas and work with collage. And so this is very stylized. This is more simple shapes to create the face. And kind of reminds me of the like, drama, the happy and sad face. Um, but I use a lot of cool colors and colors that play off each other. Um, the shape of the eyes. These are all just simple geometric shapes to build this. I've got the, the Picasso so side profile in the mouth, and this is more what? flexible. What does it look like when the color takes over the canvas? Something like this, or this, or maybe even something wilder like this. This early 20th century movement started in 1905 in France and lasted for just a couple of years. It was short-lived but had a huge impact on the art of the 20th century. It's called Fauvism, and today we'll find out why this modern art movement is so special. If you'd like to see more art episodes, be sure to give us a like and tell us which topics you want to learn about next. Fauvism got its unusual name when the art critic Louis Vossel described these artists as les faux, meaning wild beasts. The art critic saw their works in an exhibition placed next to classical marble sculptures and called the scene Donatello among the wild beasts. And despite the fact that it wasn't a compliment he was giving them, the label stuck, and today we know these artists as Fauvists. The best-known Fauvist art was created by three amazing artists, Henri Matisse, André Durand, and Maurice de Blavigny. So, Fauvist showed a firework of colors in their works, and they painted landscapes and cityscapes, but they also created portraits. And when we look at those bold, vibrant colors that they used in their works, we see different colors than what we would see in real life when looking at those places and those objects that they painted. Bovists ditched the realistic values and showed the colors they wanted to show, and not the ones you see in nature. Color no longer had a representational purpose. The ways in which Fauvists used color were inspired by the art of magnificent post-impressionists and neo-impressionists, like Van Gogh, Gauguin, and Seurat. Now let's take a look at some of the amazing Fauvist artworks. Henri Matisse's Joy of Life is one of the best known Fauvist works. This large canvas was finished in 1906. We can see that Matisse used a variety of intense, vivid colors to show an Arcadian landscape. The sea is painted in the background. New favors are lying around. There are people dancing and playing music. We really are looking at a scene of pure joy. In the central background, we can notice a circle of people that look a lot like the ones Matisse painted in his 1909 masterpiece, The Dance. Another great Fauvist artwork is called Charing Cross Bridge, and it was painted by André Durand. Just a few years before Durand, the famous Impressionist Claude Monet painted the same bridge. By comparing the works of these two artists, we can clearly notice the new tendencies that Fauvism brought to art. In Durand's work, the Parliament of London is painted green, the River Thames is shown yellow and blue, the sky is pink, and the shapes seem almost abstract, while Monet painted the scene in a typical Impressionist way by focusing on the effects of light. Compared to Monet's, Durand's London certainly seems less grey and less moody. Let's take a look at a Fauvist portrait. Maurice de Blamink painted his fellow Fauve André Durand. We can see that this portrait doesn't look realistic at all. We see a close-up of Durand's face painted in red with hints of yellow or green. His head is outlined with bold, black brushstrokes. Durand didn't really look like this, but what we are presented with here is the artist's vision of his sitter. Fauvists represent a very important chapter in the history of modern art. They paved the way towards abstract art, but the ways in which they used non-naturalistic colours also influenced German Expressionists heavily. They created many fascinating, colourful paintings that are often a pleasure to look at, especially on a grey, rainy day. Hey Muses, so what do you think about Fauvism? Who's your favourite Fauvist? And what kind of effect do Fauvist paintings have on you?
Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and podcast for more great content like this one. Finally, find us on Instagram for your daily dose of culture from Curious News. All right. Well, hopefully that gives you some inspiration. Color, color is huge. Uh, generally, the first thing I see about a painting is color. That still grabs me. And then um, the design. And there are some amazing realistic painters out there. And I still find myself liking kind of the abstract quality. It's just interesting, interesting colors, interesting design. And I think that um, abstract portraiture can be really exciting. If you haven't done it before, just work slowly and kind of create your own um, style. You can look on YouTube or Pinterest or uh, to get some ideas. You want it to be your original work, but you can definitely be inspired by, by artists that have, have come before us. And it can't, it doesn't have to be limited to uh, painting. You can do some abstract photography that's portraiture based, and you can do um, sculpture and things like that because we have that big case. And so there's a lot of amazing abstract portraiture and sculpture. I'm not sure if that's how to say it, but um, it can be really amazing too. Um, so I, I think abstract art can be overwhelming when you think about, you know, is it abstract enough or is it too abstract? Just try to, to use those words of simplified, stylized, and arbitrary coloration and ask yourself, is this abstract and is it still representational? Not realistic, but still representational. Can I tell it's a dog or a cat or a person or a group of people, but it looks different than, than a realistic piece? I think you'll be on the right track with that so hopefully that kind of gives you some somewhere to go um i mean abstract art can be again anywhere from a cave drawing to jackson pollock splatter paint we're looking for something in the middle with think picasso but you don't have to go with picasso but think in that realm that it's still representational but not realistic okay is there any questions that we can help with So I, I think you answered the question that we want it to be recognizable as a portrait, not completely abstract. Right. I, I mean, if, you, if it's pretty abstract, but you can still see that it's a portrait. What do you think, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. Cheryl says yes. <laughs> um, you can look at some of the works by um, uh, Basquiat, who, I mean. We have some in the. Okay. In the video. Yeah. The so right now we've got some examples with a PowerPoint presentation, and I'll let Chef, or uh, Marsha that's her name today. Jim. Uh, the, other, <laughs> the other Cheryl Marsha. <laughs> She's going to be showing you some examples, and hopefully this can help. Okay, that's where I thought I needed to be. Um, I can post this uh, this to our um, to our. Um, learning library as a PowerPoint too, so you can watch it. Now, let's see, let's click. There we go, here's the portrait of Cheryl. So you can um, put that up on the PowerPoint or watch the video and put it on pause for your, for your five minute sketch. <laughs> Cheryl says print it out and throw darts at it. We won't do that. Um, Let's see. Okay, so I'm not going to talk a lot. I'm just going to go through these so you get ideas.
this is kind of fun, this way they stylized um, this one by breaking it into pieces in three dimensions. This is a little series of sculptures and small pieces. There must be more later. Kind of a stained glass look. Oh, pixelation. This is Chuck Close. He pixelated things, but he didn't use just solid colors for each pixel. He had designs in each one. And uh, he was known for gigantic portraits that were hyper realistic. But you can see when you superimpose that pixelation, you can really get some wild effects. Now this, uh, if you uh, put your hand over the bottom lip, you can see that this is a face painting and the nostrils are up above where you might imagine they would be. Pretty, pretty crazy. Here's one of the things Ron was talking about with uh, the wild colors and uh, they're sharing an eye, two people sharing an eye. That's a Picasso, isn't it? Looks like yeah, yeah it does. that profile and uh -huh. frontal drawing. <laughs> oh, here's a Basquiat. Notice how they look real mask-like. That guy on the left reminds me of Andy Warhol. It is. It's a portrait it of Bas oh. <laughs> Basquiat and Andy Warhol. Ah, so it is okay to be recognizable, I guess. Isn't it? Yeah. The, sto <laughs> the story with that one, he, he went home. He goes, you know, you should paint me. I always paint, you know, I painted you. And so he went home and like an hour later, he came back with this. <laughs> we should all be that fast. Yes. <laughs> A fisherman? Yes. <laughs> I put these two together because they were so similar, the mask. There, now we're getting into some 3D stuff. Matisse. That one, if you, if you want to go back. Uh -huh. So this is what I was talking about, just a simplistic form that indicates a body, but um, it's kind of stylized and simplified and then definitely got some interesting colors. Great so color. It still represents what a person would be. Ah, here's an animal, a bird. I think animals can be even more fun than people as far as the colors you can use, especially if you put them in a, a jungle-like situation. Just the colors really would play off the, the green uh, trees and grass and things like that. So we have a lot of fun doing animals. So we don't want to uh, Matisse. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes people get confused that abstract art has to be just paint thrown at a, a canvas and abstract is a lot more than that. It's just another way of looking at things that's not realistic, if that makes sense. <laughs> Happy dog. And you can see some of these, they almost look realistic, but you can see some of the hints of simplicity and 
abstraction and then the, the arbitrary coloration just really puts it in another realm. So you go, okay, that's not realistic, but it looks pretty, pretty close. Ah, this, this is Picasso's and then later he did uh, the same woman in the red chair, but more abstracted. Yeah. That's pretty out there. Oh my gosh, we finally did come to the sculptures. <laughs> I think even though we have photography, if for some reason we didn't evolve into having photography, I think mm -hmm. art still would have found a way to, people would have got bored with just, I want to paint it exactly like that person. They would have mm -hmm. wanted to try new things. And you already saw that with Egyptian art and, and other art forms. People find a way of recreating what's already been created. Now there's a mask. Yes. <laughs> I love how they use the paint here. It's really crazy. And let it drip on this one. So Picasso has a, a famous saying, says, I spent my whole life learning how to draw and paint like a child again. So huh. he, he started off very realistic and then just moved into simplicity and um, abstraction. Okay, well, we're going to, um, we're going to post this on our learning library videos and um, it'll be under art show themes. So you can find that up there in a couple of days and we'll put the PowerPoint with it. And um, Thank you for your patience on the technical problems. <laughs> Appreciate that. And uh, I hope you all get inspired to do something really wild for the Abstract Portrait Show. Thanks thank all. You, Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia and Cheryl. Yes. We'll see you, see you guys around. Bye.